Good evening. Good evening. And welcome in the name of the Lord. So good to be with you tonight. This is the third Sunday of the Advent season. And in the old Roman liturgical calendar, this was called Laetare Sunday. Laetare being Latin for rejoice. Because we're better than halfway through the Advent season. And the dawn from on high is about to break upon us. Uh, this is the background to what used to be the pink candle or the rose candle in the Advent wreath. It used to be that the third candle of the Advent wreath was a pink or a rose color to represent the dawn, which will be breaking upon us so soon with light beaming from Bethlehem to all the world. Thank you for being here tonight. I pray that all that I say and do this evening will be a blessing and um, uh, will encourage you in your faith and, and your walk in Jesus. Sandy Butch is here tonight to give us a little update on some very big news that's coming our way. So come on up here, Sandy, and uh, tell us what all is going on and uh, what's coming down the pike. It's all yours. Good evening. I am here tonight to invite the members of our blended churches to attend a town hall meeting on Sunday, December 18th, following the 915 service at Light of Christ. The meeting will be held in the fellowship hall. This town hall meeting is being held to hear a presentation from our realtor on the proposed offer to purchase all four properties. This offer was unanimous, unanimously accepted by the councils of Light of Christ, St. Peter's, and St. John's at the joint council meeting this past Tuesday. There will be a time for questions and comments following this presentation. Also, a copy of the proposed Blessed Trinity Lutheran Church Constitution and Bylaws will be available at this meeting. This is in preparation for the congregational meeting, which is scheduled for Sunday, January 8, 2023, at which time each congregation will have a separate vote on the sale of their property and the joint vote on the acceptance, acceptance of the Blessed Trinity Lutheran Church Constitution and Bylaws. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me or any council president or the unity team. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. To further us in our Advent preparations for the coming of our Lord, let us tune our hearts and minds to this evening's organ prelude.
As you are able, please rise for the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. The gathering hymn is Prepare the Royal Highway, ELW 264. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of all who look to you, Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace, we may walk in your way. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah 35, 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. <clears throat> then the eyes of the blind shall be open and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the deserts. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of the jackals shall become a swamp and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. <clears throat> a highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it. 
but it shall be of God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall be go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any <clears throat> ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall turn and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be God. to God. Um, the gospel or the um, psalm reading will be from Luke 1, verses 46 through 55. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, Lord, you, Lord have, have looked with favor on your servant. From, from this day, day all generations will call me blessed. blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and the holy and holy is your name. You have mercy, you have mercy on, on those, those who fear you, you from, from generation, generation to generation. generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have, you have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to your forebearers, to Abraham and his children forever. The second reading is from James, chapter 5, verses 7 through 10. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Please rise. to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out in the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. Please be seated.
God's grace and peace be with you all. Amen. In the gospel appointed for last week, John was out in the desert pitching hell, fire, and brimstone. He was decked out in his prophet's getup, and he was giving the Pharisees and Sadducees what for. He called them a brood of vipers, and he told them that if they were counting on the faith of their fathers and mothers to get them into the kingdom, then they had better think again. God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham, said John. And if that didn't put the fear of the Lord in them, he added, even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Not a man afraid of mixing his metaphors. John then envisioned the coming Messiah as a grim reaper. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And in the Greek that sounds even scarier, he will burn the chaff with puri asvesto. That's bad. Ooh. That's what you call scorched earth preaching. And if anybody could get away with it, it was John. He was in his own right invincible. A man without fear. But that was last week. This week things have changed. John is no longer dunking sinners in the River Jordan. He's not drawing crowds from Jerusalem and all Judea, and he's definitely off his diet of locusts and wild honey, because he's where? Where is he? He's in jail. He's hung up his camel's hair, cloak, and leather belt for a set of prison stripes, and instead of sleeping under the stars of the, Ju of the Judean wilderness, he has a room in the old Gray Bar Hotel, courtesy of one King Herod Antipas, the vicious son of his even more vicious father, King Herod the so-called Great. Now, I've only visited, but even that slight contact was enough to teach me that prison is an awful place. Not only for what it does to your body, but what it can do to your soul. And that would include the soul of even as great a man as John the Baptist. Matthew does not tell us how long Herod had been holding the baptizer, but I suspect it was long enough for him to start wondering what in the world is going on. When Jesus came to John to be baptized, John knew right away that this was the Messiah. He told Jesus, I need to be baptized by you. But if Jesus is the Messiah, John certainly had to ask himself, then what am I doing in prison? And what's that nasty little brood Herod doing walking around free as a bird? Good questions, which probably go towards explaining the question John asked by way of his disciples. Are you the one? Are you the one who is to come? Or should we look for another? It's a poignant scene. Through his intermediaries, John lays his heart on the line. It takes a lot of courage to open your whole being to ask the one question so dear to you that you can hardly bear to ask it. What strength of character, what depth of faith it took 
just for John to ask this one question. And with the asking, face the possibility of a truly devastating disappointment. Here John is showing another side of greatness. When he asked Jesus, are you the one? Or should we look for another? Because if Jesus is the one, then what is John expecting him to do? John actually has a job description for his version of the Messiah. A job description. According to John, the Messiah's job is to clean house. John was expecting the Christ to come with his axe and his winnowing fork and his unquenchable fire to purge the earth clean of all injustice and unrighteousness. John expected pretty much what Mary prophes prophesied in her Magnificat. God's chosen would scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He would cast down the mighty from their thrones. He would feed the hungry with good things, but the rich he would send away empty. Now, don't you think it's interesting that Jesus does not answer John with a straightforward yes or no. Instead, he responds, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. That, I believe, is Jesus' way of telling John, I am indeed the Messiah, but not exactly the one you're expecting. Jesus is not your axe-swinging, pitchfork-wielding, chaff-burning kind of Messiah. He has not come with heavenly hosts to trample out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. Neither has he loosed his fateful lightning with his terrible swift sword. The only place this Messiah is marching to is Calvary. And the only weapon he bears is the cross. Now John understood himself in the words of the prophet Isaiah as one preparing the way of the Lord, making straight his paths. But even with all the things that were happening to him, especially as he sat locked up behind bars, waiting for the axe that would serve his head up on Herod's platter. John was yet not completely aware that he was walking exactly the same path that Jesus would follow. John was truly the forerunner because like John, Jesus would also end up in custody. Like John, Jesus would also suffer the injustice of cruel men. Like John, Jesus would also die a prisoner's death on the path of freeing all creation. As well you know, John's original vision of the coming Messiah is still very much alive and well, especially in the forecast and end time scenarios of doomsday preachers, supposedly based on the book of Revelation. And I have to admit, it's an appealing vision of things. I mean, think about it. God does the heavy lifting while we cheer from the grandstands. Yay, God! Go, Jesus! Think about it. Wouldn't you be delighted, tickled pink even, if God were to send his angels Michael and Gabriel, to topple Vladimir Putin from off his bloody throne. 
How great would it be for God to dispatch a heavenly host to rid Ukraine of its Russian invaders? Surely God could intervene to confound the next mass shooting and in the process pound all those weapons of mass destruction into plowshares and pruning hooks. I, for one, would love to see God arrange for the housewives of Beverly Hills to spend just a couple of months trying to make ends meet on Social Security. And then with the snap of the almighty fingers, surely God can make health care a snap for the millions of people struggling under mental illnesses, addictions, and disabilities. Come, Lord Jesus, and take this messy, messed up world off our hands. But that's not the Messiah whose path John made straight. And it's not the Messiah born to us in a cattle stall so many centuries ago. Our Lord does not lead us out of the world, but into it. In our liturgy from a couple of weeks ago, I remember a prayer that went like this. God, help us to love this world as you love it. In a way, that's the heart of what's become the motto of the ELCA. God's work our hands. The Lord does not fit us out with terrible swift swords, but instead God makes us, makes us into his weapons of the Spirit. God equips us, God inspirits us to address the iniquities and injustices, the violence and vileness has so corrupt God's good creation. I know it's an immense mission, and it tempts each and every one of us to quote that George Foreman commercial, not my problem. But if we are to carry the name of Jesus, then yes, it is really our problem. We exist as a church not just to make budget or keep buildings. We are called, gathered, and enlightened to bear the cross of Jesus because it is only by that cross that we shall overcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As you are able, rise for the hymn of the day. All earth is hopeful, ELW 266.
living together in hope and trust, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's present, let us pray for the world that yearns for new hope. Gracious God, we rejoice in the gift of your spirit. Equip the global church to magnify your love and peace in every land. We pray for the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the ELCA Global Mission. God, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Abundant God, we rejoice in your creation. Revive lands that have squandered and, re de and are depleted. Make gardens flourish in the cities and neighborhoods. Cleanse polluted air and water so living things may breathe, drink, and praise you. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Righteous God, we rejoice in your justice and racism and oppression. Deliver all who are unjustly imprisoned or persecuted. Reconcile nations and peoples in conflict. Help us pray for our enemies. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Comfort any in distress because of worry, illness, or loss. Strengthen and protect health care workers, rescue teams, crisis counselors, and all who risk themselves to t keep others safe. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Abiding God, we rejoice in your company. Give us calm and patient hearts as we gather with family and friends. Keep us mindful of those whom this season is not happy. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support. God, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Faithful God, we rejoice with Mary, mother of our Lord, and with all the saints that your mercy endures for all generations. Look with favor on those who have died and lead us to joyful, joyful sing of your everlasting promise. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please feel welcome to share that peace as you feel comfortable.
Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. salvation and our hope. We praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your saving justice and mercy. At the end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again with righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God who has come to save you. Thanks be to God. of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given 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 for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Go in peace. Amen.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, in this meal you give us foretaste of the day when the hunger will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. You may be seated for just a few announcements. A couple of reminders. Uh, tomorrow, Light of Christ members are asked to stay after the 915 worship. Uh, for a meeting, congregational meeting, to approve a budget for 2023. And that will be in the sanctuary. At 11 o'clock, St. John Windish members will be meeting at the Kaiser Auditorium on the St. John's campus uh, for a meeting of forgiveness and healing uh, as we go forward. Uh, I want to thank everyone for your great generosity over these last uh, few weeks. Uh, you've done a lot of great things, including the card letter uh, and uh, card signing, Christmas card signing, and then there was the Christmas in gathering. We didn't we didn't know if we'd make that our goal, but we did, and, and overshot it uh, by a, a whole lot. Uh, you've been doing uh, the uh, scarves and caps for the Head Start. There have been a lot of wonderful projects that you've engaged in, and we're very very thankful of it. I know that this is a time of year when we're bombarded, or it feels like we're being bombarded with appeals for donations. I, I, every day in our mailbox, I find uh, literally handfuls of uh, appeals from very great, wonderful charitable institutions. And you wonder, like, what can I do? What, what can we do? And this is a time where we just really have to trust that whatever we do, uh, in the name of Jesus, God will magnify and uh, uh, extend to people uh, in ways far beyond our imagining. Just want to rehearse real quickly some of the information that was shared uh, uh, by Sandy Butch at the beginning of our service. Sometimes things that are said at the beginning of the service, I forget by the end of the service. Does that ever happen to you? Happens to me all the time. Okay, so one... Next Sunday, there will be a town hall meeting to discuss a proposal on the sale of all of our church properties. Uh, and that'll be uh, uh, here at St. Peter's. It'll be immediately following our, our 915 worship. And what's that? What? Oh, at Light of Christ. I'm sorry. It's light of Christ. Be at Light of Christ. I'm, I get confused. Be at Light of Christ after the 915 worship, and uh, we'll look at that proposal that's uh, been brought, uh, uh, forwarded to us by the church councils, and discuss its pros and cons, and all the other things that go with it. Plus, we'll also have an opportunity to talk about the bylaws, the Constitution and bylaws uh, for Light of Christ. This is in anticipation of a January 8th congregational meeting where we'll vote on the proposal, uh, where we'll also vote on uh, uh, the Constitution and bylaws. And that will be a meeting uh, like what we had on, I think it was March 27th, when we met together and then broke off into our individual uh, congregations to vote on the issues, uh, uh, on all these, these issues that will be before us. So a lot of things are coming down the pike. Expect that uh, uh, you're going to get a lot of stuff in the mail from us uh, uh, with all the details and everything. So uh, we, we we're struggle to be as transparent as we possibly can. Okay, give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up, I see a couple of thumbs up. Thanks, thanks so much. Okay, please rise for the blessing of the Lord. God, the eternal word, who dwells with us in Jesus, who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is People Look East, ELW 248.
Thanks be to God.